Hello and welcome to this episode of Inside the Naval Post Graduate School. From our campus here in Monterey, California, I'm your host, Petty Officer Danica Sermons. In this episode, we'll highlight the new mission statement of the Naval Post Graduate School and we'll discuss the investiture of our new president, retired Vice Admiral Ronald A. Rout. We'll discuss robo-ethics alongside this year's iteration of Robots in the Roses and we'll head over to California State Monterey Bay's campus to discuss resiliency in the face of natural disaster. But first, we'll sit down with the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, Juan Garcia, during his recent visit to the Naval Post Graduate School. Thank you for taking the time out today to speak with us. We'd like to start off with asking you, with the investiture in mind, how do you envision the future of NPS? Thanks for the question. It's great to be back in Monterey and at, and at NPS. And I think probably the best way to answer that is um, when the Secretary of the Navy asked Vice Admiral Tai and I to make a recommendation to him on new leadership at the school, we uh, made our way around and spoke to what I think are uh, 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 a pretty important group of stakeholders from previous presidents, provosts, uh, community leaders here in the Monterey area, students, faculty, and among the criteria that kept popping up that people thought would be helpful in the future president were uh, a, reti a retired senior flag officer, uh, ideally someone who had some significant fleet experience, leadership experience, uh, someone with a, a significant academic background. Some of us told, some people told us that um, there'd be real value in having an NPS alumni um, in that position. And given the challenges of the last two years, someone with some experience in the IG, the Inspector General world, who could navigate uh, that often uh, nuanced world between academia and still being a Navy command. And what we found was one person who had every one of those elements. You know, uh, uh, President Rout was, uh, is a retired three-star admiral, 36 years of uniform service. He's led at every level, destroyer command, Aegis command, uh, strike group command. He was the Navy's inspector general. He was a president of the War College in Newport. Um, uh, and it even had significant industry experience, which I think is that will be valuable here at NPS in knowing what some of the customers really look for in the R&D space to help support the warfighter. The fact that he was also a life member of the, the Council on Foreign Relations, I thought would uh, add, uh, he, would, he would bring some diplomacy to what I think is one of the greatest components of the NPS experience, that is the interaction with uh, our international counterparts. Sir, would you comment on student-led, defense-focused research that takes place here at the Naval Post Graduate School and how it relates to the fleet? I think this step is a, is a great one. It highlights what makes NPS unique and what it brings to the Department of the Navy table and the Department of Defense table. Sometimes uh, 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 outsiders will, will make the case, why, don't, why aren't we sending these great naval minds to uh, a peer uh, school? It's also technically a proficient uh, up the road to Stanford or to MIT. And what you've described, I think, is the best answer because what NPS brings is a nimbleness, an immediate reply from the warfighters, from operators, about what they need tomorrow. Two students who are here who've been operators themselves, who speak the language, who can translate that, and who are going to take that experience back to the fleet. That's what makes NPS special. And I think that, that uh, uh, this program couldn't be better timed and couldn't be more relevant. With the newly optimized fleet response plan, would you speak to what our students can expect in the near future? now going on year 14 of the longest sustained combat operations in American history. Uh, we've asked a lot of our, our sailors, our Marines, and their families uh, an unprecedented operational tempo. You and your colleagues know that uh, uh, whether, whether it was as an IA or whether it was underway on a ship or uh, within a squadron, uh, the routine of seven, eight, nine, in some case, 10-month deployments um, is unprecedented in many, many ways. Uh, what we found, what, what your leadership found, is that sailors are, are incredibly resilient uh, young Americans. But what they value more than anything in our surveys, in our interviews, was transparency. If they know what's coming, if they know what's coming, if they know where the finish line is, uh, they can plan for it, their families can plan for it, and they're going to perform, and they're going to execute. Um, I think about the young um, men and women like yourself who, uh, uh, when you raise your right hand, and went to Great Lakes, you'd know nothing but wartime your entire adult life. You knew that uh, um, you know, your colleague Marines, when they stood on yellow footprints, they know they were going somewhere sandy. Uh, when you raised your right hand and went to Great Lakes, you knew you had every expectation of, of making your way into uh, to harm's way. 
So what the OFRP is going to do is bring that consistency. Consistency. Families are going to be able to plan. If it works right, if it works right in a typical sea tour, uh, eight months will be the deployment time, and folks will be able to set their calendar on the front end and on the back end. Sir, do you endorse or see need for change to the current NPS mission statement? The mission that, we, that uh, was laid out in the OPNAV instruction, second NAV instruction, is what we need. Is what we need. Um, what we do, what, what happens special here, is that uh, we take operators, warfighters, out of the fleet. They may have been out of the classroom for four, five, six, seven, eight years. Some of them may not have had uh, traditional uh, technical uh, uh, background and training in a civilian um, academic component. What this school does is get them up to speed, provides them that refresher or even that initial training so that uh, their fleet experience can translate into providing what the next generation of warfighters um, is going to need across the field uh, and across the fleet. That's what makes this place special. So I th we think, and our recommendation, is that the core mission remains the same at NPS. Sir, we thank you again for speaking with us here on the Pentagon Channel. We hope you enjoy your time here in Monterey. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you to Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Juan Garcia, who also served as the guest speaker to the investiture of our university president, retired Vice Admiral Ronald A. Rout. We have Petty Officer Torrance with the story. Students, faculty, and staff of the Naval Postgraduate School gathered in King Hall April 23rd to attend the investiture of NPS President, retired Vice Admiral Ronald A. Rout. The investiture ceremony was held to formally recognize President Rout's designation as University President. Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Manpower and Reserve Affairs Juan Garcia spoke on his role in naming Rout as NPS's new president. We heard it might be good uh, to have someone who was an actual NPS grad. Others said it was critical the next president had leadership experience in an academic setting. Some pointed out that finding someone who perhaps has spent time in the IG world uh, would be helpful in navigating the often subtle and tricky regulatory requirements of a command that, that works on that knife edge between an academic setting and is still a Navy command. Others thought we should recruit from someone who had been a senior executive in industry, uh, who could understand the role played by the school in facilitating private sector research and development in the support of the warfighter. A few pointed out that someone savvy in the diplomatic world of foreign relations would be invaluable given the international officers who make up such a significant and vital portion of the resident student population. He's a retired Vice Admiral with 36 years of uniformed service, including commands of an Arleigh Burke destroyer, an Aegis cruiser, and a carrier strike group, a Master's of Science in Operations Research from here at NPS, President of the Naval War College, a Twilight Tour as the Naval, the Naval Inspector General, Senior Vice President in a defense industry firm, member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Rout shared his gratitude to Mr. Garcia and gave his remarks for his NPS students, faculty, and staff. From the Naval Postgraduate School, I'm Petty Officer Shibli J. Torrance. Congratulations to the Admiral. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, we'll head down to San Diego for RoboEthics 2014. In exciting new times, under new leadership, it's appropriate to be equally excited about new technology. With challenges and opportunities abundant, RoboEthics has become an important topic of discussion. Next, we'll head down to San Diego for Cruiser's RoboEthics 2014. The SECNAV-sponsored Consortium on Robotics and Unmanned Systems Education Research, or CRUISER, is charged with providing a collaborative environment for the advancement of educational and research endeavors across the Navy, Marine Corps, and Department of Defense. The CRUISER-led RoboEthics Continuing Education Series is designed to help achieve that objective. Recently, its third discussion in the series was held in San Diego, tasking a panel of subject matter experts to address a scenario set in 20YY, or the future. The intent was to help address questions about ethics related to the autonomous systems on the battlefield from a commander's perspective. Cruiser Director Dr. Ray Bittner explains the roles of these panelists. Dr. Tim Chung from the Naval Postgraduate School is our roboticist for the panel and uh, he'll keep us honest that we're, that we're not talking science fiction, we're just talking the future. Also from the Naval Postgraduate School, we've got Dr. Bradley Strasser. Uh, BJ, as we call him, is an ethicist. He's a philosopher. This is, this is his world. He is going to try to make sure that we don't uh, oversimplify the complexities that are involved in some of these issues. Uh, from the commercial sector, we've got uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ran Labouvier, 
And he, his point is to talk about the fact that if you're at sea, you are dealing with the commercial world. And the commercial world will have unmanned mining systems, unmanned surface vessels, unmanned aircraft. You know, FedEx of the future might not have pilots. Uh, so he's going to help make sure that we don't oversimplify that environment and that we take into account the fact that lots of other trade and commerce will be taking place in and around the potential battle areas. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Bob Schultz. Bob is a former Navy Special Warfare captain um, and is now in the commercial sector. And he's going to help us think about the operational perspective uh, without requiring any current operational knowledge. So we don't inadvertently travel into any areas that we shouldn't along the way. Uh, Lieutenant Ben Elsner from the Naval Postgraduate School is also on our panel. Ben's the future Naval commander. He's the guy who's going to have to make these decisions down, downstream. Uh, aggressive, smart, operations research student. He's, he's been selected to make sure that we don't, uh, we don't have an abstract discussion that doesn't matter to those lieutenants, lieutenant commanders, commanders that are going to have to fight these battles in the future. And of course, uh, the naval commander herself, we have uh, Rear Admiral Margaret Klein, uh, Peg Klein. She will be the naval commander. She will give us commander's intent. What are the issues that the panelists will try to identify for her that will make her job easier in the future if she has to fight this type of naval battle? With local sailors and video teleconference participants from Panama City and the Naval Academy in attendance, panelists kicked off the discussion at Tactical Training Group Pacific's auditorium with NPS Assistant Professor of Philosophy, Dr. Bradley Strasser, as the moderator. And the hope here is that all of us can present different ways where the commander really is going to have new uh, tensions in their decisions, new difficulties in making a leadership choice in these kind of scenarios because of the new uh, medium that they're fighting in. The idea is that the future of military technology is going to really change the battle space. There's going to be uh, difficult proportionality decisions a commander may have to make versus uh, weighing lives of their own sailors versus weighing the assets that the robotics can do themselves. Should I put my sailors at risk when I can use an unmanned system? If I'm going to make that choice, how does that affect my ability to do command and control? How does that affect my capabilities? Is it worth putting my sailors at risk uh, in place of a robotic system if I don't have to? These are the kind of questions I think that future commanders are going to face in really new ways that present day commanders or commanders of the past haven't had to. So the goal of the panel is to really act like a future advisory team to the commander on those tensions. I'm imagining we're going to definitely have some disagreement amongst our panels on how that calculus weighs out. But our goal here today is just to raise these questions in a novel way that hopefully gets our young officers we're going to have here today, uh, all the different naval officers and personnel we're going to have in the room and on VTC, to ask themselves now, what would I do 10 years from now if half of my units are unmanned? How does that change my decision as a commander? So I think we're going to have a lively debate and discussion, and uh, hopefully we can shed some light on some of these questions. While Strasser offered the ethicist perspective to the conversation, Cruiser Deputy Director and NPS Assistant Professor Dr. Tim Chung provided the roboticist point of view. With the background of interest to include modeling and analysis of operational settings involving unmanned systems, Chung provided a realistic take on what challenges and opportunities would be faced in a situation like the RoboEthics 20YY scenario. I think what I can offer the conversation is a perspective on what's not only right around the corner, but what's also in the realm of possibility. I think the notion that we have to understand what our forthcoming capabilities are, but also the limitations is the perspective that I'll bring to the table today. In a scenario set in the future, it was important that Cruiser and the RoboEthics panel address the role of the future leader. Systems engineering student, Lieutenant Benjamin Elsner, was selected as a panelist for his working knowledge of unmanned systems and robotics. I'm currently working on uh, two theses down at uh, NPS. One is investing in the use of a surrogate test missile for use uh, to test shipboard combat systems. The other one is looking at uh, distributing a carrier's air wing through the use of unmanned uh, aerial vehicles to be able to use it in a variety of environments at a lower cost and less risk than would be involved in bringing an actual aircraft carrier in. So obviously I've, I've been looking into unmanned uh, aerial vehicles quite a bit uh, through the course of both studies. Another cruiser-sponsored event is their Robots in the Roses Research Fair. This year marked the fourth year of the event. Here's our story. Chartered by the Undersecretary of the Navy, Robert Work, Cruiser was commissioned and held their official launch of their program at the first annual Robots in the Roses Research Fair in 2011. Three years and one director later, Dr. Ray Bittner now serves as the director to the program. He welcomes guests and participants to include students, faculty, staff, community high school students, and their families. No one asks why we call it Robots and Roses. 
NPS is a hotbed for robotics and unmanned systems research. Students and faculty across departments are constantly working on different components of concepts, research, and development. Professor of Physics Dr. Kevin Smith participated in Robots in the Roses this year and explained the physics behind his robot. So this is an autonomous underwater glider. Uh, it operates under a buoyancy engine which allows it to uh, both become heavier than water and sink and lighter than water and rise back up. And it's able to pitch itself forward and back which allows it to glide when it's going down, glides forward uh, and when it's coming back up, it glides forward, and so it's able to move through the water at about a knot. Pretty interesting stuff. Coming up after the break, we'll talk about disaster resiliency. NPS staff, faculty, and students realize the importance of community involvement. Faculty members from the Center for Homeland Defense and Security Department recently met at California State University Monterey Bay to discuss disaster resiliency. Beyond the classroom, our faculty, staff, and students are working diligently to make an impact within the community. Monterey County government and community leaders alike met recently at the campus of CSUMB for a summit on disaster resiliency. In attendance was NPS's very own Homeland Defense and Security Coordinator Wendy Walsh. Well, I've been involved with the local community since I've been at NPS, so for the past nine years, representing NPS's and the Navy's interest in local coordination. Here we are, NPS, we sit in Monterey County, we have a lot of students here are transient. How do we ensure that we're part of the solution in preparedness and response rather than a burden for our local county? But also, we have a lot of awesome research that's happening here, opportunities for students to look at localized problems and for our faculty as well. And how is that relevant to the Navy? Well, we have a humanitarian assistance in disaster relief, so we're traveling across the globe responding to some catastrophes that happen. And if we can develop our research to respond to what our local need is here, we'll have a step up when we go across the globe to respond. NPS Homeland Defense and Security Coordinator Wendy Walsh served on the non-governmental and faith-based organizations panel in her capacity as president of the Monterey County Citizen Corps Council, with more than 100 participants representing the military, government, education, business, and local citizen communities, the role of the Naval Postgraduate School and the neighboring Defense Language Institute was to take those relationships into consideration and to educate leaders on the resources available in the face of disaster and humanitarian relief. My role was to describe the Center for Homeland Defense and Security and the resources that we offer in terms of strategy and policy. And Homeland Security is so broad. There are so many, you know, law enforcement, fire, public health, emergency management, all the things that folks do here in Monterey County. Uh, we have resources. So if they need a NIMS policy or if they need a, a strategy for mass evacuation or lone shooter, we have those types of resources available here and they just need to know about them. When disasters strike, communities must pull together to recover. The most resilient communities are those that plan in advance. With the follow-up event already in the works, it is the charge of our faculty, staff, and students here to stay engaged and to remain valuable partners to our community and its agencies. NPS is the Department of Defense's leading research institution, providing relevant higher education to our military and Department of Defense civilians. Here's a quick look at the new and exciting things happening at the Naval Postgraduate School. Located adjacent to California's majestic Monterey Bay stands one of the world's leading institutions of higher education, the Naval Postgraduate School. At NPS, more than 100 years of graduate education for officers of the U.S. Armed Forces, international partners, and DOD civilians have led a unique strategic resource in American national security, a university where leaders across the Department of Defense fine-tune their respective crafts. At NPS, our mission is quite simple. We educate America's warfighters, along with those of our partners and those who support them with an advanced, unique graduate education that is truly one of a kind. Curricula at NPS cover a broad swath of national security's most critical needs. Cyber operations, management, information operations, national security studies, and many more. But in spite of the variance among our diverse programs of study, all are grounded in the core values of leadership and advanced critical thinking, skills our students will use the rest of their careers and beyond. 
These programs and curricula include, but are not limited to, the Cyber Academic Group, where NPS uniquely combines national and cybersecurity courses into a disciplined chemistry of operations, research, and complex thinking, enabling graduates the ability to support cyber-dependent missions, functions, and focus objectives within the cyber domain. The Space Systems Group, where students endowed with advanced knowledge amassed from cutting-edge, defense-related research. Through the Space Systems Academic Group, I've been given the opportunity to learn about space systems operations and apply my previous operational experience to identify and solve tomorrow's problems. The knowledge that we gain here at MPS today will become a force multiplier for the fleet tomorrow. Well, I'm here studying information warfare systems engineering. And uh, what's really unique about the military student body here at postgraduate school is how all of us have come from five to ten years of operational experience. So we've come right out of the infantry units, right out of the wing, uh, straight from Afghanistan in some cases, straight from uh, MU and ARG shipping, uh, forward deployed around the world. And we're here now in the academic environment. So we, uh, we bring to our thesis and to our academic studies all of that operational experience and we see our academics through that lens of operations. So when we leave here with our degrees and our theses completed, we'll take that back to the operational forces and enhance the operational forces with the knowledge that we've gained and leave them better than we found them. My name is Brenton Campbell. I'm a physics student here at the Naval Postgraduate School working robotics in the Advanced Robotics Systems Engineering Laboratory. Here what we're trying to do is take small, relatively inexpensive robots and make it so that a single operator can control the many, unlike what we're doing mostly operationally now where we have a group of people controlling one very high-end autonomous vehicle. My biggest takeaway from NPS is how much a group of people with diverse academic concentrations can accomplish. I'm a physics student, but I work with students in the computer science, systems engineering, and operations research departments. We all have our unique perspectives, and because of that, we're able to accomplish a lot more than if we're all in the same curriculum. Across the street from campus is Monterey Bay itself, which provides open ocean ranges, and the California National Guard's Camp Roberts provides uncontrolled airspace for leading UAV and other research opportunities unmatched anywhere else in the U.S. The greatest strength of the Naval Postgraduate School is its world-class faculty. Many are leaders in their fields, like Professor Guillermo Owen of the Math Department, twice nominated for the Nobel Prize, or Douglas Porch of National Security Affairs, one of the most eminent military historians of our time, and Wayne Hughes of the Operations Research Department, author of the classic Fleet Tactics. The list goes on across campus, where many NPS departments are nationally ranked. At even the finest universities, just a handful of professors focus their studies on defense. But at NPS, virtually every professor devotes considerable energy to military and security affairs. This makes for an exceptional learning experience for our students because our professors deliver their lectures directly. At NPS, there are no teaching assistants. And the world comes to our door seeking our expertise. NPS provides a robust educational experience for our allies and partners across the globe. There have been more than 5,500 officers from over 100 countries who have attended NPS. I have uh, classmates from everywhere in the world here, such as uh, Chile or Colombia, Mexico, Germany, Tunisia. After graduating, these international students have gone back to their home countries to rise to the highest levels within their militaries, and some have gone on to become leaders in government or business. We are proud to have been a part of their legacy. NPS has over 50,000 graduates, with alumni who range from admirals to astronauts, service chiefs to chief executives. They represent all of the U.S. military, government agencies, defense industry leaders, and many more. 
NPS fulfills the graduate education needs of the Department of the Navy, DOD, and U.S. government by granting master's degrees, PhDs, and offering subspecialty in both military and professional education certificates. NPS will continue to provide relevant graduate education that meets the needs of our nation. Well, that's it for this edition of Inside NPS. As we close out, we'd like to thank you for watching here on the Pentagon Channel. I'm Petty Officer Danika Sermons.